Hey everyone, so I just got this new iMac and I wanted to test it out and with this I'm going to be trading more actively because I've taken it a little bit slow for the past three or four months. I've been swinging positions more than day trading. Um, I've been swinging a short position on uh, Bitcoin for quite some time using an inverse ETF BITI on the Canadian market. And uh, I've been in and out a little bit, but for the most part, I've been holding on and I've been swinging a few other positions here and there. I did a swing on Pfizer. I did a swing on Dollarama and a few others. But I want to get back into the day trading, the buying and selling the same day. So I'm diving into options. I'm diving into Forex. And I just look forward to a lot of new and exciting things in the new year. And I want to use this new computer with this nice camera and this nice mic to start doing some lives in the morning, live trading sessions. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, so a lot of things to come. And I wanted to make this video not just to give you a little update there, but I was with a friend in the car and he's uh, he hasn't had the most success in his investments. And he found that he was buying a lot of these hype stocks. And, you know, maybe they went up at first, but at the end of the day, he ended up losing his profits and more. And this happens with a lot of people. A lot of people, they jump into the market, they buy the hot stocks and maybe it's going well at first. And it often turns around and it takes the money back and more. So he was asking me, you know, what do I do? Do I hold on to these stocks or do I sell it and start fresh? Now, in my opinion, and I didn't specifically tell them this, tell them this, but in my opinion, what I would normally do is I like to start fresh. If things aren't going well, if I'm not liking uh, a stock, the chart doesn't look good. I don't like being a bag holder. I try to get rid of it as fast as possible before my losses get worse. That's just my strategy. Um, especially when it comes to riskier stocks. If it comes to a value stock, it doesn't totally make sense to sell it for a loss if it's a really good fundamentally valued stock that's going to be good over the long term. But for me, it's all about the charts. What do the charts say? And that's how I make decisions for the most part. So I was just giving him the impression that, you know, maybe it's good to start fresh, start new. Uh, and I didn't tell him this specifically because I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. I just tell people what I would do. Um, so I would start fresh in that situation um, because he told me a few of the stocks he had and they were kind of these stocks that were kind of pump and dumps. They went up a lot and there was all this hype and, you know, they got overpriced and they end up just dropping and taking back all the gains and more. So I told him two different strategies and two ways to really look to make money in the market. And the first strategy is the obvious uh, and simple strategy is to buy and hold value stocks, good fundamentally valued companies. And my suggestion was to buy a lot of the forgotten gems, the stocks that people forgot about because they're not exciting. Maybe they're boring um, and stocks. Uh, you know, in regards to that, that I was referring to, I like McDonald's and Coca-Cola and maybe Walmart and Bell Canada, and Loblaws, a lot of these names that uh, they're a little better valued than a lot of these other stocks out there. And they, they just didn't get overhyped, you know, much of things in general are overpriced, mind you, when you look at the house market and just everything in general seems to be overpriced. But you know, when it comes to some of these names, they're not as overpriced as other stocks because there's just not hype there. You know, there's no hype for Walmart. You know, nobody's running around telling everybody to go and buy a Walmart stock. So um, some of these stocks, they're fairly priced and uh, they can be good long term holds. Now, there's not a suggestion of what you should invest in. There's just some of my thoughts. So uh, when I hold some stocks long term, I look for more stocks that are kind of underpriced, more value stocks, pay a good dividend, um, not something that is just the hype or is just cool or just because I like the company. No, um, if I'm holding something for the long term, I want a really nice chart in uh, combined with really nice financials. Um, so that's one way to kind of make money over the long term is just to simply invest in very good fundamentally valued companies um, and just hold for the long term. And the second thing um, and the way I've kind of done things over the years and the way I got started was to find the next trend or the next hype before it becomes the next big hype. 
So I've told people this before and how I got started in the market was with the weed stocks. Now, actually what happened was, um, I think it was 2013 or 2014, they legalized weed in Colorado state. Um, what, and I don't know how I got the idea. Maybe I seen it online. I'm not really sure, but I got the idea that maybe I should invest in marijuana stocks, some penny stocks, you know? So I put a couple thousand dollars in some random stocks at the time, some penny stocks, I ended up losing my whole couple thousand dollars because I got in late. It was already legalized. The hype was already kind of done. The real money has been made already. Um, so I got burned. I lost a couple thousand dollars. I ended up closing my account fairly quickly and kind of gave up on it. And uh, it was, uh, I don't know, seven, eight months later or so where Trudeau was like, oh, uh, I want to legalize weed. And you know, right there and then I'm like, okay, I got to open my account back up. This is my chance. That's what I thought because I thought and I realized, um, and I, I, I think I read the strategy online buy the mystery, sell the history. So I got in Colorado late. It was already selling off because it was already legalized. I was late to the game. So when Trudeau came around and said, I want to legalize weed, he was actually losing in the polls at the time. And it was expected that Harper was going to win the election. And I thought, you know what? Trudeau's going to win. He wants to legalize weed. Everybody's going to vote him. So I thought he's going to win. I started pumping some money into Canopy Growth at the time. I think it was called Tweed at the time um, that I started buying it. It was $1.98 a share. And we all know what happened with that. And the weed stocks went up for years. I kept pumping more money into them. Um, I started learning the charts and stuff like that. And I did very well because I knew from my first lesson was buy the mystery, sell the history. So come around the second time, I bought the mystery, I sold the history. As soon as it was legalized, I knew these stocks were pretty much done for. And actually, if you look back, it was the day before weed was legalized that these stocks peaked. Literally the day before it was legalized in Canada, these stocks peaked. While Everybody else and new investors are coming in saying they're legalizing weed. These stocks are going to skyrocket. Smart money that got in much earlier is selling, selling to those people who are really late to the hype. And that's called buy the mystery, sell the history. It's getting on a trend before it becomes a trend, like getting on the hype before it becomes a hype. And that's one of the best ways to make money. And I think uh, that's what happened uh, with Bitcoin actually is and, and I really put two and two together, which is why I've been holding a short position on it now. And I, I plan to keep shorting it. Every time it goes up, it's just short it, short it. Um, you know, I, there's going to be big bounces along the way, and maybe I'll play the bounces too. But for the most part, uh, I, I expect it to head further lower because I think it's a big buy the mystery, sell the history event. And essentially, the mystery was inflation. Bitcoin is supposed to be an inflation hedge. And so... As soon as the Fed announced that they were going to start printing all kinds of money, what happened? Bitcoin started going up because the market knew and everybody knew that they were going to cause inflation with all this money printing. So Bitcoin started going up. And get this, as soon as they announced high inflation, they, they, it was like a month and a half ago, they announced the highest inflation in 30 years. Guess what? That was the day that Bitcoin peaked. And I've taken this all in. It, it hits, I think it was about 69,000 that day. And I had taken this all in and I, and that was a day I, I, I started loading up on my short. I said, you know what? This is going to be a sell the news event. I knew it. And, uh, you know, you might not believe me, whatever. I have the evidence on my Instagram stories. If you want to check, I put it in my highlights because I'm so excited about it. Uh, shorting Bitcoin. I think it's such a great opportunity. Um, so. I think that's what happened. Uh, most of these marijuana stocks end up dropping 90 plus percent. I expect the same to happen with cryptos for the most part. As far as people don't believe it, it doesn't matter to me. I know it's good. I've been through it all before. Um, and that's my opinion. I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm quite, quite, quite confident in it. Um, uh, and in fact, I don't want to get into it anyways. I don't want to get into the crypto thing. Watch my other crypto video for that. But Anyways, buy the mystery, sell the history. I think it happened again with Bitcoin. And, and the key is that you have to be able to spot these trends before they become a trend. You have to see what's going on before, before the crowd jumps in. The crowd jumped in crypto. And, you know, the vast majority of people that were going to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum would have already bought it because it's so easy to buy. Everybody already told everybody. 
And it was the same with the marijuana stock. It was actually, I was telling all my friends to buy it $2. And I had the same friends call me when it was $60 canopy and they wanted to invest. And I said, and I, I thought to myself at the time, I'm like, okay, it's getting close to the top now because these guys I told to buy it $2 now want to buy it 60. It's getting close to the top now. That's what I said. And uh, so I started being more cautious. Um, and it happened again another time. Okay. And I'm telling you all these stories about me and whatnot, but I, I, uh, I, I was feeling quite depressed and, uh, you know, I read something about magic mushrooms helping with depression. So I found myself some magic mushrooms um, and I took them and, you know, at first I felt t absolutely terrible. It was a really bad experience at first, but then it got better and I started to feel really good. And actually it gave me this idea and I thought, hmm, is there any stocks tied to this? That's what I thought. And I think it was the next day I started looking uh, and I, I found out about mind medicine. It, was, it wasn't even on the market yet. It wasn't even on the market yet. And I started looking for ways to invest in these psychedelic companies um, early on. And I started buying mind medicine at around 30 cents. Um, and mind medicine, the sell the news event on that one was the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ listing. So it, it went up. Until the day it was listed on the NASDAQ, that was a peak. It hit seven, $7 from $0.30. Cents. Um, and that was a peak. And it was a big sell the news event there, too. You could see a huge volume spike that day. And it's just been going down ever since. Um, and the thing is, the crowd already jumped in. There's a lot of people I talk to. And they think, oh, the shrooms, it's the next big thing. No, you already missed the boat. The big money's been made already. Everybody found out about it already. You know, the company... It's still worth around a billion dollars and they don't have any revenue at all. They don't have any approved medications. And essentially they're just using street drugs and trying to get street drugs approved. They, they have some proprietary stuff, but anyways, personally, I don't think it's a good investment. I thought it was a good buy the mystery, sell the history thing. I thought it was a good hype thing. You know, let's get in on the hype before the crowd, because I thought, Hey, this thing's going to be hot, you know? So if you could see that beforehand, you know, somebody who bought a Tesla and said, hey, this is a really cool car. You know, maybe I should invest in the stock years ago. They did well. And if they sold now and they've said, hey, I'm not selling until Elon sells. Maybe that was a, the, the sell the mystery, sell the history thing, the Elon, because the stock's been struggling since uh, Elon started, started selling. And it, it might have topped for now. You know, Tesla is another very expensive stock. Um, I don't think it should be priced anywhere near what it is. Um, but that's, again, uh, my, my opinion again. And uh, so, but if somebody caught on and they bought a Tesla and they said, maybe I should invest. And, and they did. And they said, I'm not selling until Elon's selling. Well, they did well. Or, you know, somebody caught on and said, uh, lithium, you know, hey, EV stocks are hot. Maybe lithium, they need lithium to make EV stocks. Maybe let's invest in lithium, makes sense. So what I'm saying is you have to be creative. You have to think outside the box. You have to think ahead. And that's oftentimes how you make the most money. When you jump on a trend before it becomes a trend. Now, how do you spot it? It's not easy, you know? And hey, I got some ideas now, but I'm not 100% sure on my ideas, but I feel quite confident in some of my ideas right now. And I'll let you know soon. Um, but it's about spotting the trend before it becomes a trend, spotting the hype before it becomes a hype. And once the hype comes, you let it ride for a little bit while it, while people really go crazy for it and you start making some crazy money and then you sell. Once it gets really overheated, then you sell. And that's when the real money is made. People buying Tesla today, you know, personally, I think they're going to lose money if you ask me, but if the stock does continue to go up, the amount of money that's going to be made from now on out is going to be way less than somebody who bought it a year and a half, two years ago. Okay, the real money, the big money's been made already. Um, and let's just say the same thing with Bitcoin. Sure, even if it does go to 100,000 and I personally have my doubts, it's only doubling your money. The real money's been made already for the people who bought it 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 or less. That's the real money. Um, and it, it actually hit around 3,000 right when the Fed uh, 
during the COVID crash, and then the Fed announced a stimulus, and it was a, over a 20 bagger from 3,000 uh, to almost 70, over a 20 bagger. And if people think that's sustainable, uh, they really don't know much about the markets, in my opinion. Um, it's all a game, you know, and you're playing a game. Uh, if if you're if you're buying these high risk stuff, you're playing a game. If you're buying long term good value investments, it's different. You're not playing as much a game. You're investing. Um, with a lot of these risky stuff, you want to be trading it. You want to be in and out. You want to have an exit plan, in my opinion. Uh, so those are two ways. You're either investing in really good companies for the long term that are very good valued stocks like Warren Buffett does. Or if you catch on to a hype before it becomes a hype, you catch on to a trend before it becomes a trend and you need to be creative. Sometimes the idea just hits you and it just hit me with the weed. I was probably high in my basement. I was probably high in my basement. And I'm like, oh crap, they're legalizing marijuana in Colorado. And then I lost my money and I learned my lesson. Sometimes you got to lose before you win. And I learned my lesson. So the next time came around, that first $2,000 loss actually saved me a lot of money. It made me a lot of money the next time around uh, because I knew the strategy. I knew the game. Um, and I've been doing this for a while. So I know a lot of the tricks and a lot of the games. I don't know everything. But I'm, I'm quite knowledgeable about a lot of the games and the strategies and stuff in the market. So, yeah, um, one thing I was thinking now, um, and kind of the trend, maybe before it becomes a trend, is one, more bearish plays. I think shorting Bitcoin, I think that's a trend. I think this is great. I, I think it's an amazing opportunity to short these cryptocurrencies because people seem to believe these are worth something. And in my opinion, none of them are worth anything. They're all zero might take very long to get there if it ever does, if I'm correct. But I do think a lot of these, and I don't know how anybody could think, Shiba Inu, Do Dogecoin, and all these coins, I don't know. Uh, it's mind boggling that people actually think these are good investments. Um, so I think that creates a big opportunity because most people don't understand. Most people don't know what's going on. Most people don't think it's a bubble. Um, and most people think for God knows what, these things are going to keep skyrocketing. And that creates opportunity. Um, because now I see something, I think, that other people don't see. I see that Bitcoin was a big sell the news event, but most people don't see it. Most people are completely blind to the fact. Um, and I could be wrong, but that's my thoughts. And so since I see something that others don't see, it creates opportunity. And it, it, so far, it's been good. It's dropped from 68,000 down to 47. I think it's going a lot lower. Um, it'll bounce on the way. It'll go up and down. But anyways, all part of playing the game, seeing things that people don't see. And another thing I was looking at, and I'm not too sure about this yet. I'm not too sure about it yet. But um, I was thinking gold. And, you know, gold is it's not very exciting. But my thought was, if crypto's crashing, if crypto's going to go down, it's going to crash, and a lot of people are going to get burned. Um, and it was going up because it was supposed to be an inflation hedge and we actually have an inflation. What's the real inflation hedge? What's always been the inflation hedge? It's gold. Um, and gold has not priced in inflation. It, it hasn't even moved. It's been going sideways. I think there's a lot of loading going on in gold. I think there's a lot of buying, um, slowly. Um, so I'm looking at this big triangle pennant pattern on gold and I'm not too sure yet. So I'm, I'm not saying this for sure yet, but it's just an idea for now. And the idea is, hey, if crypto's gonna crash, if inflation is high, if gold is underpriced and everyone's forgot about it and nobody cares about it, maybe that creates an opportunity to get on gold before maybe it becomes a trend. Maybe gold is gonna be the next trend. Maybe it's gonna be hot again. Because every 10 years or so, gold tends to have a nice big bull move. So we're, we're hitting that mark and we've consolidated for a long time. Um, people kind of forgot about it and you know Hey, maybe it's the next thing. I'm not too sure yet I'm keeping an eye on this nice pennant pattern before I really make any uh, Decisions or calls on it, but something I'm keeping an eye on um, And with that gold bullion gold stocks, but uh, I like the actual physical gold uh, is, is something cool to hold on to and if you're in the GTA um, a good place to buy it could be your banks uh, PMX um, and I have a friend that sells it as well. Maybe I could put a link in this video. Uh, I'll take a look. Um, and uh, yeah, so
catching trends before it becomes a trend. And then the third way, and I, I said there was two ways from now, but there is a third way. And the third way is trading. And you have to be a really good trader. Um, you have to be able to trade those ups and downs on a daily basis, swing trades, because you're not always going to be able to find the next thing that's hot. You're not, not always going to find the next big thing before it becomes a big thing. It's not that easy to do. Sometimes you stumble upon it, like I have multiple times with weed and with mushrooms. And yeah, that tells you a little bit about me. Hey, I like to experiment a little bit with some of these drugs. So I tried them out. Um, but hey, people could say you're a drug addict. Hey, but thank, thank God I was. Huh. Hey, it done done quite well for me, but I'm not a drug addict anyways. Shrooms is it's not something you want to do on a regular basis, that's for sure, um, in my opinion. Um, so it's something very, very, very occasional. I don't even have any desire to do it really, so I'm just happy it gave me the idea to invest in some of those stocks. And uh, weed, I did it for so long, eventually you kind of just get a little sick and bored of weed, and I don't want to make my lungs black. So I'm a little tired of these things. So getting a little bit older now, I guess, and uh, new and exciting things should be in the future, maybe a wife and kids one day. Um, but really, so this is some of the things I wanted to talk about in this video, but a lot of things are coming, Forex, options, live trading, more videos, more content, um, planning to hire people to help me. I've got a friend, he's trying to work on a bot that trades for you on Wealthsimple or Interactive Brokers or Forex. Um, using my strategies hopefully at some point so that's not for sure but something I'm looking into but a lot of things I really want to do in this new year um, it's a lot of work it's a lot of time it's, and it might take might take me a while uh, so hopefully I get a lot of it done and a lot of achieve a lot of my dreams my goals but I hope that I help everybody else out as well and guide people in the right direction um, because the stock market trading it's not an easy game it's not an easy thing to do um, but you know, I do have a lot of insights. I have a lot of experience and I hope that I do find that next big thing. What's the next big trend? I don't know it yet for sure. I have a few ideas, but part of it for me is just shorting crypto. I think that's huge. I think it's a great opportunity. What a great opportunity. People are paying $50,000 for nothing. It is mind boggling. It is crazy. And I know a lot of people don't agree with me, but that's fine. I agree with myself and that's all. And I've been making money. So, hey, as long as I continue money, making money, following the charts, going in the right direction. That's all I need to do. And it really doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. So as long as my account is going like this, that's all that matters to me. And if I can guide people into making their accounts go like that too, well, that's great. That's exactly what I want to do. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it helps out. I'll drop a lot more videos soon. Hope you guys have a great evening and uh, good luck trading and uh, happy new year.